Ratchet and Clank, the iconic PlayStation duo that still brings high quality games within the third person shooter genre. Through timeless adventures that bring fun and explosive gameplay, giving players a wide range of weapons, gear, collectibles, comics, and bolts. Today we're taking a step back as to how this franchise became what it is today. In 1998, this company made a game starring a purple dragon by the name of Spyro, creating three amazing 3D platforming adventures. That company is Insomniac Games. After completing the Spyro trilogy, they took the next steps to make a brand new game. Their approach would be different from their Spyro games. They wanted a third person platformer with a twist. So in 2000, throughout the development period, they quickly went to work on their main protagonist. Insomniac Games obviously had different attempts before they had their duo. Their first idea was Monster Knight, an action adventure using various creatures and armor. Think of this as a combination between Zelda and Pokemon, while throughout the game you could level up your abilities. Eventually the idea was scrapped later on. Their next attempt was Girl with the Stick, another idea that had similar attributes to Zelda and Tomb Raider. The problem with the concept was it didn't feel like anything much. It was going to have more complex mechanics around it, but it didn't get that far. In layman's terms, it wasn't fun. In 2001, Insomniac was running out of time to make a game for Sony's upcoming console, the PlayStation 2. So after dropping the concept for Girl with a Stick, their next and final attempt would be Ratchet and Clank. The insane part of the development was once the team had completed the game, they had already planned and greenlit a sequel. This was five months before the first game was even released to the public. Just playtesting the game only proved they had so much confidence with this franchise. Another part that helped Insomniac with their development process was Naughty Dog. Just like Insomniac Games, Naughty Dog is a gaming company that created popular games from Crash Bandicoot to Jack and Daxter, The Last of Us, and the Uncharted series. Both Insomniac and Naughty Dog were like deskmates working within the same building, developing games, sharing ideas, passing on codes and assets. They got the job done, helping each other on both ends. When Ratchet & Clank released in 2002, it was indeed successful, selling over 1 million copies. It even became the first Western game to make it into Japan's top 100 games ever. Ratchet & Clank was praised for its beautiful graphics, unique and incredible gameplay. It wasn't just a 3D platformer. With the use of wacky weapons, intriguing combat, and strategy made this game really fun to play. Ratchet & Clank became this adaptation of a 3D platformer mixed with an action-adventure combat style. It continued to make the franchise last for so long than your average 3D platformer. One of the most interesting parts about the game was its story. The game starts off with our main duo, Ratchet, an alien-like cat called the Lombax, and Clank, a defective warbot created by the main antagonist, Chairman Drek. Like Destiny, the two meet and start their adventure to stop Drek from his misdeeds. Ratchet and Clank introduces a lot of characters from the environment, from worlds that you explore, talking to NPCs to receive their advice, tactics, and upgrades getting objectives and learning more from their planet and personalities. It really helped make this game stand out and made exploring each world so fun. It also shows its views of the society and capitalism within the game as you purchase weapons. The game's universe also uses bolts as its currency while you go around blowing up enemies and crates to use them. It also introduces Captain Quark. He's a character that acts like an advertised superhero, even though he's mostly the franchise's comic relief in certain ways, while having different motives throughout each game for trying to reach fame as his number one goal. Another thing I would like to mention was the game's tone. Not that the T rating says nothing, more so Ratchet was considered really rude throughout some points in the game, making insults, snarky comments, and dissing Clank for unnecessary reasons. In the end, when all was resolved, he takes ownership for his selfishness, although the damage was already said and done. It was also a sign of criticism that was brought into Insomniac's attention. Of course, the franchise was only getting started. I already mentioned that this game's sequel was greenlit five months before the first Ratchet & Clank game was even released. So after the success of the first game, in 2003, Insomniac went big and created its sequel Ratchet & Clank Going Commando, or Locked and Loaded for the European release, taking the great parts of the original game, fixing the bad, and bringing it over to its sequel was a perfect choice. Adding more weapons, more worlds, and more fun than before. It only took them 10 months to complete the game, which meant they had a bigger team of people to make this all happen. They implemented a lot of worlds and crazier weapons while finding new ways to utilize them, improving the game's reward feedback loop, finding ways to earn more bolts in various ways without losing the core gameplay. 
then saving Ratchet, and making him a better character and protecting his friend Clank and not going against him. It was also obvious in terms of voice actors. In the first Ratchet and Clank game, Ratchet was voiced by Mikey Kelly, then replaced by James Arnold Taylor, to help make Ratchet friendlier for the sequel. The team even went as far as to make Ratchet feel like a professional commando too, expressing their character in entertaining and passionate ways through his actions. This sequel was deemed a fan favorite to all players, breaking their original sales record and selling over 3 million copies. With the work of Ratchet and Clank Going Commando finished, Insomniac Games just kept going. Within less of a year, Ratchet and Clank 3 Up Your Arsenal was the next title to be completed before the end of 2004. So during all that, Insomniac Games hired more developers to have all hands on deck working on its third installment, bringing almost 120 more people to work on the game. This time, their plans were to go even bigger than the sequel, making bigger worlds, more weapons, more challenges, more cutscenes, and even more vehicles. They hired Brad Santos to make the most high quality narrative for the game, creating a bigger plot than its sequel. The pre-production for this third game was underway before Going Commando was even released. My god! Throughout the development, they would coordinate between the level designers and programmers, while another team was working on a different game for the PS3, Resistance Fall of Man, and not even knowing what the hardware specs will be needed for the game. Once they got to work on 3, it was thanks to the new hires. They were massive fans of the Ratchet & Clank series, and they were already working on 3 before Going Commando's release just to get ahead of the deadline. While this was a massive project for the entire team, they were divided into two groups. One was to focus on the campaign, while the second was focusing on the first ever online multiplayer mode, using weapons from the first two games and then combining it with Up Your Arsenal. All of this work was far beyond what the team had intended. Of course, with this much, it was obvious that they were put into crunch mode. They were aware of their goals and ambitions, but bit off way more than they can chew speeding up training for new hires to work on animations and throwing them into the project without careful planning for the story. It's all thanks to them that they would release the game a week early before the deadline. It was a miracle to have finished the game at all, just pulling towards the finish line. Nobody would have known if they'd succeed with Up Your Arsenal. After it was all said and done, Insomniac Games made sure to never ever go through that experience again, while taking more care for their employees. So on November 2nd, 2004, Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal was released. It became highly praised by critics and fans around the world, selling over a million copies in the US alone. So yes, it did exactly what it intended from Crunch. Since it was a direct sequel to Going Commando, the story had continued from there. A lot of praise went to the characters brought into the game and the amount of content you had within Up Your Arsenal. Now with Ratchet and Clank being celebrities at this point after the two games, they were famous and had done so much for the galaxy, except when trouble occurs from Ratchet's home planet by a new foe, Dr. Nefarious, a reoccurring villain in future entries. It's up to the duo to save their world and the galaxy again. With this story, plus its new and returning cast, the mechanics tweaked and brought from the sequel to this game made it a huge deal. After upgrading the worlds from the first game to the third, it was the best experience for every player. The gameplay had shifted directions from the last two games, a lot of Up Your Arsenal took linear pathways for each level. Other levels had challenges and bonuses you could complete that progressed the story, including different paths to reach your destination. There is so much that was done to this game, but let's move on since this became a long segment. Now that the trilogy was created, this left Insomniac Games wondering what could they do next. So now it was time to get experimental. This meant that Insomniac started adapting different ideas. One concept was Ratchet and Clank Nexus, where a global war was happening between two alien races. This conflict would make Ratchet and Clank choose whose side to be on, creating a bigger conflict. However, the idea got shelved and they decided on something else, introducing Ratchet Deadlocked. This idea first started out as a vehicle game while prototyping, except Naughty Dog beat them to the punch with a similar approach, Jack X, a vehicle racing game. So they kept the prototype plans and changed its purpose. The idea was then fused with similar mechanics from Bungie's Halo games. So Ratchet Deadlock became an open world style of combat, using new mechanics, a new story, and bringing this game all together. On October 25th, 2005, Ratchet Deadlock, or Ratchet Gladiator, was released. This new approach from the last Ratchet and Clank games was positively well received. Ratchet and Clank are kidnapped into an illegal gladiatorial battle. 
along with other abducted heroes and fight against their will. Now Ratchet has to compete and stop the greediest antagonist, Gleam and Vox, in his game show, Dread Zone. Giving players so much control and creating chaos within the game, the amount of weapons and vehicles to use, the possibilities felt unlimited. The challenges and story felt unique and enjoyable, including multiplayer co-op to have more fun with friends, while selling about 2 million copies. The only issue around the game was its mixed reception from the fans. It's not a bad game, but it wasn't a Ratchet & Clank game that was similar to its trilogy. Now I'm not going to go too far with this Ratchet & Clank game since it wasn't developed by Insomniac Games. I mean, kinda, but not entirely. This Ratchet & Clank game was actually built for the PlayStation Portable or PSP, and later re-released for the PS2. It was developed by High Impact Games, made by a few Insomniac employees. The game did really well for the PSP, and the reception for it liked having to play a classic style of Ratchet & Clank on the go. The console version didn't go so well. While reception was mixed with this version, containing bad camera controls, gameplay being difficult to navigate with, and graphic scaling issues. So you better have been lucky to save your money than to own the PS2 edition. Insomniac Games had begun production to move Ratchet & Clank to the PlayStation 3 console. However, this task would prove to be incredibly challenging overall. The entire team at the time had lacked the hardware, the engine, the games code, and assets. They were having to start a new Ratchet & Clank game from scratch, so the team took the time to revisit the foundation they had built for their Ratchet & Clank games on the PS2. While they used the engine from their previous game, Resistance Fall of Man, and showcased the city of Metropolis. When this footage was shown in 2006 at GDC, the producers at Sony were blown away. They had compared their work to a massive CGI film. Sony was now sold and wondered if this could accomplish such a feat within gameplay. So the team had built new concepts to best fit the game's engine and made sure that it played as a Ratchet & Clank game. This included animation, speed, movements, art style, physics, and how Ratchet would look on the PS3. They were highly ambitious with this new approach for Ratchet & Clank, but had to scale back their ideas if they wanted to meet the 2007 deadline. With all these new changes to Ratchet & Clank, that meant it looked more cinematic, hiring new writers to develop a larger narrative, creating lore, 25 planets to explore, world building, and answering questions from previous entries. A ton of shifts have been made entirely for this franchise. Insomniac wanted to make the most epic Ratchet & Clank game ever, they also wanted to find ways to include co-op and online multiplayer. Even though they wanted to go all out, it just wasn't possible. All of those ideas had been part of the pre-production for the game. Because of this, the pre-production team only had one planet out of 25 they needed. Due to bugs and crashes, it looked to be unattainable. Now that the team processed and understood the amount of time it would take, everything had to be shelved. The amount of levels, planets, and cutscenes were scrapped. This included the multiplayer idea and how it wouldn't work either way. This would become the first in a new line of Ratchet & Clank games for the PS3. So the team had to work with whatever they had in order to keep this franchise relevant, which introduced the Ratchet & Clank Future series. Throughout each Ratchet & Clank Future game, the weapons would be the next level of gameplay. While the PS2 era had their own style of weapons, the Future series would incorporate new and unique ones, while packing the same punch as the original PS2 trilogy. Coming from their work on Resistance, they made the most of the weapons incredibly fun to use, while finding new methods to animate all the enemies in numerous ways against each weapon. While some weapons carry for the future series as fan favorites, while some would be left behind due to less popularity. The story revolved around Ratchet's species, the Lombaxes. This idea was explored before when Ratchet Deadlock was developed, except they wanted that plot to be absolutely necessary for the time to come. It was then brought to Ratchet and Clank Tools of Destruction. The entire game not only introduced new and returning characters, but each one would start having importance throughout the narrative. While the dialogue for the game mentions Ratchet's family, it doesn't go any further down that road. It still retains the basic plot of stopping an evil villain. Although exploring more about Ratchet's home planet and where he's from as a subplot could have been intriguing, instead it stops in those moments during gameplay. The same could be said for Clank as his heritage is involved as well. They even go out to help Ratchet and Clank on their quests. Although they went through great lengths and depths talking about them, they're hardly brought up again. The NPCs are similar to the PS2 Ratchet and Clank games, but they hardly have memorable appearances and importance to them. They are mostly plot devices to progress through the story, not showing too much personality or charm. 
The whole series from this point on played like a movie. The original characters from before are retconned, and the humor changed as well. The work Insomniac did would start to become different. Now, even with all that I just expressed, this doesn't mean that the games weren't good. They still set out to make the best gaming experience. They had accomplished that with their sales, being praised for each game within the future series. Tools of Destruction sold over 75,000 copies in October 2007. Quest for Booty was overall positive in 2008, but had criticism due to lack of elements missing. A Crack in Time would conclude the future series in 2009 while it was highly praised and turned into a massive hit. After the future series, Ratchet & Clank would have a comic book series that ties in the events from A Crack in Time, explaining what happened to our heroes and what have they been up to and what adventure lies ahead. Captain Quark surprisingly becomes the Galactic President. This would lead our cast into the spin-off series Ratchet & Clank All for One, the ninth installment in the franchise. Did I mention this was all canon? Because all of it is. This is a co-op and online multiplayer experience where you play as Ratchet, Clank, Captain Quark, and for the first time ever play as Dr. Nefarious. The crew had been abducted by an unknown enemy and everyone needs to work together to survive, find their foe, and return home. The next game is followed by Ratchet & Clank Full Frontal Assault, celebrating the 10th installment and anniversary of the Ratchet & Clank series, followed by Ratchet & Clank Into the Nexus, where our duo return together in the final conclusion for their PS3 adventure. The game, based on the movie, based on the game. I guess that was the marketing slogan for the reboot of the decade. That's right, Ratchet & Clank had returned for their PS4 2016 reboot, alongside an animated movie. That was fast. The 2016 Ratchet & Clank game is exactly a reboot from the original 2002 game. All of the history you had from this game was brought and remade onto the PS4. Graphics enhanced gameplay, with the weapons you remembered mixed with the new ones, and more. The only exception from this game lies within the fanbase. The reboot was a good game, but it wasn't something the hardcore fans liked. There were many complaints about how this game became a disgrace. It was overly sanitized as a Pixar film rather than a Ratchet and Clank game. The story was completely changed into a cliche that had to fit the animated movie's narrative. Random characters were thrown into this game that replaced the original cast, and the returning ones aren't the same as they once were. Fans of the game were upset to see the care and personality of the original game just washed away, as this commercial advertised mess. It also shocked me to see this route that Insomniac Games took. I get that making a movie is one thing, but changing what made the PS2 game so special just felt wrong. But the game went well. It invited newcomers to see what this game was all about. Even though it ended up dividing the fanbase, it still turned out to be a really good game. This also turned out to be the only Ratchet & Clank game for the PS4. The announcement for the PS5 was underway. Insomniac Games was dominating the gaming industry with Spider-Man. And behind the scenes in 2019, the development for Ratchet & Clank was a go. The plan was to have the game ready to ship with the PS5 in hand. However, circulating this game was a ton of pressure. Insomniac needed to develop a Ratchet & Clank game that appealed to everyone in some possible way. For those who wanted answers from the PS3 games, the diehard fans of the PS2, the newest PS4 players who were wanting more, and the kids. The task was so daunting that the team was in a mess, just to find a way to make this game carry over the last decade that Ratchet & Clank had been through. The decision was then a story involving the multiverse, which made a bigger mess for the team where they shot themselves in the foot and delayed the game over half a year. Insomniac Games were just as serious about taking care of their characters than we thought. Not only did they want to adapt their title for everyone to enjoy, they would need to please the fans of different eras, reasons, and interests, having to break down all of the previous games and their story. So in 2021, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart was released. The story shows off the newest character, Rivet, a female Lombax, the parallel universe counterpart to Ratchet. She lives within a dystopian world where Dr. Nefarious wins and conquers planets, now with her and the Resistance battling against Nefarious. While back in Ratchet & Clank's universe, they're the main guests of honor in a parade to celebrate their work over the years. Clank, for some reason, rebuilds a device from the last Ratchet & Clank game, the Dimensionator, a way for Ratchet to find his family. But of course, nothing good lasts forever, as Dr. Nefarious destroys the parade to steal the Dimensionator, and uses it in an unsuccessful way while chaos ensues, which leads Ratchet and Clank to be separated from each other. 
Now in Rivet's universe, it was time to stop the threat and save the multiverse. Thanks to the incredible speeds and upgrade of the PS5, it brings gorgeous graphics with cutscenes and gameplay working together seamlessly. As the action takes place, it is hands down the best experience since the last Ratchet & Clank game. Just by how fast the game runs, and with barely any load time, you could play this game for hours without even realizing it, while going in and out of dimensions in a split second, showing how fast the render speed is. Many new and returning weapons also make the pace of the game just as exciting. While upgrading, they will also apply for both Ratchet and Rivet on their journey, with rifts to each dimension also changing the experience once in a while. Both Ratchet and Rivet use a device that allows them to enter dimensional pockets, rifts, to teleport around maps and during battles against enemies. Insomniac Games even took the time to emulate their older ideas into Rift Apart. The many ideas from the future series that were implemented into Rift Apart worked so well. The game sold over 1.1 million copies. Ratchet and Clank have gone through a huge journey. To see this franchise last this long from the 2000s says plenty. I honestly have to give respect to Insomniac Games. From blood, sweat to tears, they somehow managed to pull off the impossible. Granted, not all of the games are perfect, but they became so well made. The fans continue to play and thrive from this franchise. New players get to experience what makes this game so awesome. As for me, I'm absolutely curious to see what they'll do next. I guess we'll have to wait and see.